Morning guys, how you all doing? All good I hope. Welcome back to the channel. This morning is Wednesday the 10th of July. I'm back down at Weybourne today, but I'm just going to do sort of normal beach fishing, rods and bait. But I have brought a lure rod with me, but uh, I'll explain all that when I get down there. It is now bang on half past four. Uh, it's low water at 20 past four this morning. So I'll be sort of like fishing on the flood all day long. It's high tide at 10, so I'll probably give it to about 11, half 11, and then call it quits and get back and uh, sit and chill and watch the footy. Come on, you England. So without further ado, I'll get down there and I'll see you on the beach. Okay guys, it's half past five. I need to sit up for a little bit, for about half an hour. But uh, just set up sort of one rod at a minute. Well, what sort of two, I'll show you that in a minute. I've got a two up one down with nug worm and squid on the top two snoods above the lead. And nice big bit of mackerel and squid on the bottom. The other rod, because I'm still undecided what I'm going to do, probably a bit, a bit of everything on that one. I've just got some mackerel feathers on there and a light bomb. But I did bring my law rod with me, because I've noticed that's why I've been, sort of, I've been fishing for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. There's loads of tiny little fish busting right close in, and a couple of sort of like schooly bass I've seen jumping as well. But I've had sort of like a couple of dozen chucks of the law, nothing in a minute. So I'm just going to cover all bases at the minute. Oh, I've got a two off and one down on the left rod, the yellow one here. The long, uh, the Nafe long cast, full carbon rod. Shakespeare Salt Surf 7000. 60 pound ASIO shock leader. 45 pound nine strand Hercules braid. Through to a 70 pound rig body. And two Avis booms with 25 pound Flora Max and size ones Aberdeen hooks on there and a 2 on the bottom and this one here say literally at the minute I've just got a few I found that on the found this on the beach coming down here the whole rig so I thought I'd just whack that on just sort of like one and a half ounce lead and a few mackerel feathers but I did bring my mackerel feathers with me and I've got my law rod as well exactly the same as the other day my Shakespeare salt uh, 10 foot rod, 30, 80 gram. Uh, Shakespeare Mac XT, 2, uh, 5000. 25 pound floor max straight through. And a 30 gram Savage Gear ultra realistic sand hill. But what I bought as well, I bought one packet of me feathers as well. And bait, I've got loads of fresh lugworm. I went and picked up 100 yesterday. Yeah, picked up a hundred fresh lug yesterday. I was up early yesterday, got up at six. Went and picked the lugs, worm up at about eight o'clock, come back, sorted all them out. Uh, 30 of the worst ones I bled, salted and froze down. I've got one packet with me today. I've got loads in the freezer now. Whatever I don't use with these lug worms, I'll do the same when I get home. I've got one tub of mackerel which I've cut into strips. 
got a little bit of the herring and a big box of squid and that's basically it and I've just got my rucksack with me today I'm traveling light and it's what a chill day I spent all day yesterday on the computer putting a few films together <coughs> then a bit of cleaning then I maybe saw that I did a bit of batch cook yesterday made myself a nice big um, lamb spinach potato jar crazy a hot one and a chicken bolting two great big pans covered them up in the little takeaway containers you got freeze them down that's done for the month now so I've got some nice luck oh there's fish busting out in front of me lamb jowl crazy tonight but I think I've just cast this one a bit too far I'm going to bring it in and I've noticed where the um, pipe is there's a bit of a drift obviously a load of crap coming out of it there's like a little river channel running through dirty grimy water you can see on the surface so I'm going to just cast it straight into there I reckon that's where this fish seem to be busting in and around there probably picking up all the bits of excrement or no doubt Basically, guys, got the left rod out into the scum line, coming out from the pipe. And the right hand one's just three or four baffle feathers on it, and a little one and a half ounce bomb. That's basically a little bit of squid, and it's literally down 10 yards out, 10 15 yards out. There's loads of tiny little fish busting along that line. So you never know, there might be a chance of patrolling back, or I'm not going to even say the M word. There are many other F word, C word, but not the M word. I did hear a few whispers on the grapevine. There was a couple caught the other night, overnight session. I want to say the M word, I don't mean that mother... Mother putter. The other M word. That thou shall not speak. Today's a bit more about relaxing and just enjoying being out. I've got my law rod. I'm gonna have a coffee, sit and chill for five, and then I'm gonna have a few more cap. See we're at slackish water now. I just get a couple of little knocks on the left one not long after I cast it in, but I think that's just that crab stripping up the uh, mackerel again on the bottom bait. And on the worms as well. Pretty much three clean hook. We just that tiny little backwards and forwards motion. I ain't gonna give it long, I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes, wind it in and see how bad the crab situation is. Okay we literally just brought that rig in and every hook is bare. It's only been out five minutes and I haven't even seen anything on the braid. So tiny bit of squid left being ragged away well, I better get this bait and straight back out again just hope that's not crabs okay it's nine o'clock <clears throat> quick update 
absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's a guy came down about five minutes after me, just to my right. He's packed up and gone. And he's doing exactly the same as me. One rod with bait, another one spinning. Or mackerel <laughs> with feathers. He had two mackerel on one cast, probably about eight o'clock ish. But that's it, and he's been down all the time, he said. It's very sporadic, very sporadic. So he gave me some bait, so cheers, buddy. Just give me a few lugworm, some rag, which I've just put on now. I've got ragworm on the top two, and he gave me about six peanut crabs. So I've just put crab and squid on the bottom one, and I've been spinning as well with feathers, and I've got the same rig. I'll show me a rig in a second. But it's been very quiet. I'm just getting stripped like with crabs. Just within five minutes, the bait's all gone. So yeah, it's been really, really quiet. It's strange. The old mackerel feather chuckers all out from the left of me now. There's about three of them just come down. Yeah, the feather rig. Just got two ounce bomb. And a string one, two, five feathers. All of it. But I've been casting and casting and casting and nothing. Just for a 70 pound rig and 20 pound snoods. Little size one must have Viking hooks. I made these myself. This is a Mayard tubing, some silver strands, some feathers, just knocked them all up myself. I normally do the business. <clears throat> just with a bit of silver and blue paper. All stuff from car booty, dead cheap. And I've got my uh, spin rod, which prefer I'm just sticking with the sand hill today. I'm going to give that another go now it's coming up to high tide and the pipe's gone. So I'll have to chuck a few down in the gutter. So I'm just going to gather another few goes on the feathers and see if we can get a few mackerel out since they are coming out. We said the guy came down, fished it overnight with the feathers, we've got about a dozen or so. But again, very sporadic, we fished pretty much all night. But, uh, they're here, but there's been two or three seals around this morning, really close in, up, coming up on the shore. I think that's probably spooked him as well. And there's a big line of crab pots out, two or three lines to my right, that's why I came here. But we'll keep plodding on, we'll keep persevering and hopefully like the other day it'll all come good in the end Ok guys, I'm all done packed up, back at the car it's just before 11 o'clock about 5 to 11 ah, it's shocking today, shocking not a nibble, not one bite on, on the bait tried uh, lugworm, ragworm squid, mackerel crab, not a touch not a touch, just getting stripped by crabs Try the feathers. I've seen two mackerel out all day, and that was about six o'clock this morning. The guy to my right, there's about ten of them down there now spinning. I've not seen one single mackerel come out since then, since the six o'clock this morning. That water's muckied up again a lot. There's been loads of seals around today. There's about six seals, a couple of big black seals, a couple of grey seals, right up close in on the shore. I think that and the crab pots and the mucky weather. Uh, they're just staying out further out to see so not a short and sweet video today uh, I'll probably be getting back out not tomorrow so it's probably Friday uh, I'll have to plan my attack and have a look at the tides and all the rest of it but anyway for now take care all the best I'll see you again in another video
how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. This morning I'm down at Hopton. It's Friday the 12th of July. I wanted to go to Casey, I wanted to go to Braddock Road. But just looking at the weather and the wind situation. Um, it was a bit too gnarly there, it's sort of like moderate to strong. And it was a toss up between there and here. I put it in the random wheel of fortune, I thought. Well, I have to remember blank the other day at Weybourne. Uh, I let the random wheel decide and I've got no uh, complaints. So um, it's now it's coming up to half past four. I was up nice and early this morning. It's going to be low tide at half past seven. So give me three hours. The time, well, about two and a half the time I sort of set up and that. The last of the ebb, the low water. And then it's going to be high tide at half past one in the afternoon. But I was thinking, brilliant, you know, I thought, I've come down here, I was looking all along the Norfolk coast, where it's sort of like the least sheltered and the least windy, uh, and it was Hopton. I thought, that's great, because I can go in one of the little coves here, and I'm going to do exactly what I did the other day at Weybourne. I've got the two rods, I'll have a, set up a two up and one down rig, with worm or whatever on that, as a scratching rig, catch anything. I'll do a, uh, a one big rig with a pulley panel, a uh, big bait on there, probably start with mac, uh, crab. I've got a few uh, peter crabs left, crab and squid. Toss that out now as far as I can. Hope for smoothie or dogfish or anything, or ray or any, anything that come along. And while it's sort of like coming down to low water, if it's quiet, I'll pull one of the rods, set the clutch really loose, and pick up the law rod and have a spin along uh, in one of the bays in sort of like along the rocks um you never know might be a chance of a bass or anything so that's my plans without further ado i'll show you guys down on the beach Okay, about to set up. This one, uh, Lafe long cast 14 foot full carbon rod. That's with the Shakespeare Salt Surf 7000. 60 pound ASIO shock leader. 45 pound nine strand Hercules spray. I've got a two up or one down rig on here. I'm gonna try a five ounce lead. 70 pound rig body. We've got a £40 snood on the bottom of this one and a 2 0 Aberdeen style hook. And it's got two flappers with Avis boom. Two flappers, £25 Flora Max. Size one must have Vikings on both. That one's just got a few uh, flotation beads on it, just to pop it up. Uh, that's a size two on that one. Probably well, we start with vlog on the top, snood. Back on the middle one. Probably mackerel on the bottom. We'll see. And then the other rod is Lafay Blue Ocean. Same reel, same line. Oh, there, £70 rig body. I've gone for a six ounce lead on here. Pulley rig. Got 
25 pound. I'm going to decide to go slightly lighter on the hook length. 25 pound floor max. And again, smaller hooks. Size 1 O Mustad Viking. And a size 1. I'm just going to put a smallish bit of crab and squid on there. But I picked here in this bay, where I normally go, there's belting in there. This one looks about sheltered. This one, as you can see, it's still belting in this side as well. There's a few more waves on that one. This bay is looking slightly uh, calmer. Probably, if I can, get the two up one down off the end of here so I can get the big rod cast right out into the middle as far as I can get it. Right, let's get baited and get, get them out. And then I've got my law rod. I think that, that bays out the question, but I can have a walk along there, have a spin along. I'm going to put a bit of uh, baby squid on there. I'm going to stuff it with my mackerel. I thought I was going to do a wrap, but what I thought, get one of these. It's got a nice strip of mackerel. I've got the head in there, popped it all in. Just going to pop that inside like that. And then this thinner end, I'll put that on the bottom and the panel through the top. So there's a bit more hook pen uh, showing and a bit more penetration. So I'll get that bound on. Yeah, it's all bound on. It's got the hooks nicely exposed. Hook it under the imp. So, I'll get that cast out into the middle. I'm not sure which way the tide's running at the minute. We'll soon find out. I don't want to speak too soon, but it's actually got too much pull on there. It's pretty much straight. It's just a bit out wind. I'm a bit concerned with this uh, the braid. All right, let's get this one other baited and get cast out. Okay, got this one baited. It's got a nice strip of mackerel and a couple of bits of squid, just tipped it off. Same on the middle snooze. Small strip of uh, mackerel and just tipped with one bit of squid. And on the top one. Got two lug worms and a little bit of squid. The reason I put the squid on, it stops the bait flying down the hook and coming off on the cast. And also, it just keeps the uh, hook point showing. If the bait slips down and over the point of the hook, you get that all important fish and you miss it. So just putting a bit of squid on and just going over twice just keeps that hook point nice and proud but right, I'm going to get this one cast not too far 
literally to the end of the uh the wind's blowing this way so the braid should be bowing that way i'm just going to go for a gentle off Okay, we're out, we're fishing. Let's get this mess tidied up. Yeah, I need a good tidy up. <laughs> Probably uh, set the station behind this rock here. We'll get the lawn rod set up. I might be able to have a put a dexter wedge or something. It's got 40, 45 grams on and have a few cats. Show you my laws. If you are bought, I've got the Pachenkos in there, but it's there certainly out of the question for today. It's got my Fox, Xander Pro, Suzuka, 28 gram, shallow diving, one and a half meter to two meter diving, Toby Mackle, 30 gram. Again, medium, well, that's about two metre, two and a half metre diving. That's the old Anafe one. Suzuka. 28 gram. Two to two and a half metre diving. The Heron Shaft. 140 gram Dexter Wedge. Thirty gram Savage Gear Ultra Realistic Sand Hill. Got two of them in pearl. It's got a new thirty gram Suzuka deeper diving uh, fast sink wobbler in uh, candy pink. I've got a few of the uh, Sand Hill. I haven't used them very occasionally because they're quite light. But what I thought is, I thought, oh, I've got a couple of the uh, quick change ball lead systems. Just pull the ball off, there's a clip inside there. Clips on, clips on, you put the clip there so it stops it coming off. It's going to give it a bit more weight. That's just 10 gram plus the 15, so 25 gram. That should do nicely now. I can just jig these along the bottom. Got the luminous one, one in white and red head, <clears throat> one black back, and one mackerel blue. So oh, I'm glad I bought this body warmer. This is July, man. What the hell am I doing? That must be bloody mad or stupid. 
Or one of the two, well, or both. Uh, but I was just thinking about sea fishing, like any fishing, or especially sea fishing. It's just a lottery, and you know, I was watching one of Pom Pete's videos the other day from, I think it was Bapton. They got some of the best match anglers in the world, and blanking, most of them blank, two thirds, you know. And you just, you know, the sea fish, you never know. It's, just, it's like trying to do the world's biggest jigsaw puzzle with a million pieces, with 500,000 pieces missing, but you're never going to know that. Not until we get right to the very, very end. Right, we set up, set the uh, law right up. Just looking at the weather, I'll probably um, I'll start with this, I think. Not lose it this time. Okay, guys, it's bang on six o'clock. I've just had a recast just to check the baits, <clears throat> make sure they're not being stripped or anything. Only left about five minutes. But it was all good. Baits all clean. I've just sort of like figuring out the tide, so I've got a little bit longer on the left rod, the two off on one dam. There's a little bit of weedy off the end of the rocks there, and now the tide's pushing out. To give that another sort of like 20, 30 yards on that one. The bait was all good on the panel rig. So I've relaunched that as far as I can get it. That wind at the minute is starting to lay down a little bit. Fingers crossed. <laughs> But I was, I was almost tempted like half an hour ago to go put my woolly hat on. I thought, <clears throat> you can't put your woolly hat on it, it's the middle of July, for God's sake. <laughs> but let's hope for a fish today, anything. A little dab, pouting, flounder, anything. I've had a couple of casts with the law rod. But it's, it's water's really way, way mucky today, way mucky. And I don't think it's going to clear, clear up much. Probably not until August. But let's hope at Hopton. Well, you're never going to believe this, guys picked up the law rod, put on the uh, 30 gram candy pink deep diving wobbler, second cast, I felt something shake and there's a bit of weight on there and I pulled it in, <laughs> I haven't blanked but uh, a bit of fortuitous but I'll take it and a new species for me, it's my first ever Dover sole, well they're Riley, they are tough old things, it won't stop wriggling but uh, Quick picture. <laughs> he's a he's a wriggler. Oh, <laughs> you're definitely not a juggler. You won't be in the circus. But yeah, nice little Dover sole. They are fantastic eating if, when they're decent size. But this little one, I'm going to slip back. But new species, and we haven't blanked, sort of. But I'm going to take it. Well, that Dover sole's just got my head scratching now because that was caught literally. Right in the middle of the bay, quite close in. So maybe I'm going a bit too far with this two up and one down. Might have to switch around with the rods, bring the big, big rod in, have that one on the left, and cast this one in the middle of the bay a little bit shorter. The way the wind's pushing in, and the waves are pushing in, in this direction, it, it might be just a little bit closer in. So I'm going to do that in a minute. But I'm going to have another chuck about with the uh, law first. Okay guys, 8 o'clock. Just had the one Dover sole. Both rods are out. I've got a great big piece of, uh, or a bit of, whole bit of baby squid stuff with mackerel. As far as I can get it on the left rod. 
Right, and wads two up, one down. We've got lugworm on the top smooth, mackerel and squid on the second one, and a big bit of mackerel on the bottom. That's just the way he's doing that. It's getting a bit of a slop on now, but the bait's coming back clean. But yeah, the, the way the w waves are pushing in here now is all right earlier on, but now they're getting this bit sideways on. I've got the rods quite high, but it's a bit of a compromise. Like too much slack line in the water, and the waves are just dragging the line. It's making it worse and too tight. It just keep bouncing out. So I'm just letting it settle for 30 seconds, slowly winding down, just enough so I can pull the line. I can wedge wedge it on the tip, and that's it. You will get that backwards and forwards motion naturally from the tide and the wind, but you'll know if it's a bite. You'll get that fast, just sharp, jagged, or just scream off. It should be, it's eight o'clock, should be at low, it should be slack tide. But it's probably the wind that's keeping the tide for long. I was just talking to a lady there, she goes for a swim every day. She went yesterday, said it was beautiful and uh, flat calm. Couldn't go out. She said, she said it was at 10 minutes. She said that tide's uh, still too much pull on it. I said, I know, it's weird. That's because the stiff normally wind. There's definitely a lot more murk in the water today. I'm going to pick the lure right up. I've got the clutches slacking right off. Got a doggy or something for a change. Well, what I've done with the lure rod, because of a quick change ball bead, it's 10 grams. I'm having to cast around with the lures, but 30 gram, it's getting pulled by the tide a little bit too much. We might put a 45 gram wedge on in a minute. But what I've done with the sand hill, got 30 gram Savage Gear sand hill, and I've just put the quick change link on the bottom there, so it's 40 gram now, and that's a lot better. Pull it up the end of the bottom. But seeing as it's slack water, it's supposed to be slack water, but it's not. It's low tide at half seven, and then it's high tide again at half past one. All right, let's give this a go. You never know. If you don't cast it out, you're never going to know either. Big waves coming in.
just feels weird, whatever it is. I don't know if that's just the tide and uh, burying the line, but the soup uh, has just come through. Yeah, I think that's tide turning, burying that line for a bit. Nope. It's not going to leave the baits out too long. Is that line getting buried? Guys, two up, one down. I had a bit of a tremor on it. I struck into it. It's a big dead weight all the way in. Felt a little head shake as I got it right close in. Meaning, meaning, it. It's just I felt like a small ray or another one of them Dover soles. So it was a decent fish, and there's one little head shake close in there, and it just gone. There's no weed on it. The bottom two baits look good, but the one with the love worm on it on the top spoon is completely gone. So I don't want to say I was going to do. I just rebaited, refreshed the baits on the two and one down. I just switched the big rod to my left now, and the two and one down. I've cast right into the middle of the bay, just on the edge, so we're a little bit short. If there's any sort of like decent flat fish coming in with the surf and the waves pushing in this side. Fingers crossed. We're having black, we're off the mark. Touch of fortune. <laughs> but you've got to be in it to win it. I'll take the fortune. I'll take a bit of luck. I need it after the Wednesday at Wayball. That was shocking. Not one single bite all day long. Baits getting stripped within five, less than five minutes. Not a touch. I've got high hopes now. <laughs> Let's hope for a little bit more fortune. And the sun is shining on the right. I think it is. I'm off this week, so I make, I might as well make the most of every day. I'll probably get out tomorrow, but I've not decided where and what I'm doing and what I'm fishing for. Course fishing, sea fishing, spinning, I'm not sure. But I'll be doing something. Okay, guys, it's not going for me at the minute. Just had a big slam down on the big rod. Wound into it, really heavy, really, really heavy. I'm going to feel the head shaking. I know it's a ray, I know it's a ray. It's locked up for a bit. 
ball's going to pull for a break. But by pulling the rod, why am I not the clutch? Just tie it down and get it. Pulling the rod at it, kept pulling it back, pulling it back, pulling it back. I've got it right close in on the surf again. There's a couple of fangs and shakes, but then it just freed itself, gutted, but on, on the end, somebody else's rig. Leader, hooks the lot, weight. Uh, a little bit of fortune. Had two big, good shakes, and then the whole thing just went flat. Slack liner. So, right, we'll get this straight back out again. Okay guys, it's about 29. I made a decision, I'm gonna move because it's supposed to be high tide. I think it's about half past one. But the state of the tide is coming up into this uh, bay here. So I've moved back twice, but we've got ages till high tide. I noticed this morning all these rocks are wet. So I'm gonna move down to the main slip just so I'm a bit safer. We're going to get the gear. Might take a couple of moves and have a walk down into the, the bay where you come down. So I don't know how far it's going to come up, but I think with this strong breeze pushing in, it's going to be even higher today. Well, I'm going to make a move. Okay, guys, I've moved uh, spots. Just literally come to the next bay where I was originally going to start and slip right, right behind me there. Just cast out. The left rod is about 20, 30 yards off the end of that point there. And the big rod is straight out of the middle. I literally launched that one as far as I can get it. Probably about a good 100 yards. You never know. Might be a turn of fortune. There's a few birds working along out there. Might be worth a cheeky spin as well. Five or six birds there keep taking off and going along this line. But the baits are coming back com completely clean completely clean. I've had the bottom bait on the tilt one down come back absolutely ragged a bit and that looks like a flatfish to me. Yeah it's just completely the opposite to Wayborn the other day. 
I mean, way bomb, couldn't leave the base out for more than five minutes and come about could totally bear up. But here, complete opposite. Then you have to bring the big bait in and cast it further to the left. I think if we want to see sun this year, we've got to go abroad, I think. It ain't gonna, you're not gonna get a prolonged period. You might get one or two days here and there. But that's about it. Shocking, worst summer I've ever known. A lot of room on the water as well. I know someone put on uh, Facebook the other day. They're saying, oh, what's all these bubbles? I've noticed them this morning. And then people were like putting stupid comments like, oh, it's fairy liquid or palm oil or pollution. It's not, it's just, it's called Froom. When the, it should have been a lot earlier this year, it should have been about April time. April, May, when the May rot starts and that weed and the debris in the water starts breaking down, causes a natural bacteria and it flows to the surface accumulates it starts white and then as more and more debris gets accumulated in it turns brown comes to frothy foam you can see the line a bit along there so maybe the water are starting to warm up ever so slowly before it cools down <laughs> next month Hey guys, it's quarter past ten. It's absolutely dead. So, been having a scratch of the nugget. Fish paints aren't working. The mackerel and herring's not working. The lug worm's not working. So, the top tooth nudes. I put two great big bits of salted lug, tip with a tiny bit of squid. And on the bottom hook. I've got three bits of king prawn. I thought oh, I'll try the shellfish bait, see if they're going to work. And a nice big bit of squid, just bound on 2 0 Aberdeen hook there. Right, let's get this cast out and see if we do any good. I'm going to bring the big bait in as well, and then I'm going to switch that up and put a great big bit of herring on there. Okay guys, what I decided to do, I've got about half a dozen little uh, peanut crabs to froze down. So I've kept the baby squid, cut two of them up in half, stuffed them inside, and found one on the back with a bit of it for a spell. Grab the squid wrap, I'm going to get this cast wagged, I'm going to get it wagged out. But I'm not going to go too far, now it's coming up to high tide, or it's on the production I'd say. Wind's getting nasty again. Come on, we've got to have a fish. Come on. We haven't lost all hope yet. Have faith, have faith. Have optimism. Not over till it's over. Well, I was thinking, I'll probably give it to about half eleven. on the way back I'm just gonna have a wrecking just to check out one or two new spots is it 
spinning around the armor barrier. Just sort of, I've pinned them on the map, but I wanted to make sure we're in time. No parking issues and bits and pieces. Right, that'll do. Can't wind down too tight, like, not this tight. Well, it's coming up to 11 o'clock, it's starting to rain, so I ain't going to give it much longer. But it's just as well I uh, bailed out of the next bay there, because it's pretty much flooded out in a minute, and it's laughing against the rocks. I knew it was going to be a big tide. And I can see from this morning all these rocks soaking wet and the pathway was wet and some of the bottom of the wall so probably a good, a good choice to bail out of there but I had nowhere to fish anyway so you can see them waves cracking over now it's still got two and a half hours I'll give it half an hour and then we'll call it a day. Go on, last chance to lose. Can't say I haven't tried today. Kept busy, kept working at things. Changing the baits, checking them, recasting, trying different lines. There's just nothing here. One day was sold on the spinner, but I'll take it. <laughs> I am a blank. It's a fish on the bank with a hook, and that's all that counts. I have seen one guy who's just come down. He's gone way over to the right, up down there, towards Corton Way. Look at the state of that water. That's starting to come in here as well. So I'll have to probably move this back. I expect it to come in this bay here. And it was wet this morning up to this where the metal rate uh, metal bit is along the floor. So good decision to move. One fish. One fish, come on. I'm sure I had two little plucks on the left hand rod. Not long after I turned the camera off the last time. There's two little. Was it definitely weren't the way, it was just. Tap, tap. And that was it. Alright, guys, I'm all done. Back at the car, it's half 11. I would have stayed all day. I would have stayed a lot longer if that weather picked up, but it's 12 degrees. The sea's getting really sloppy. It's getting chocolatey. Uh, started to rain, so I thought, ah, oh, sod it. Um, just a one Dover sole, and it's a bit, uh, bit of fortune in it as well. But uh, that's the way it goes, I suppose. You know, that's sea fishing. I'll probably um, just scratch my head at the minute. As I say, I'm going to have a quick recce to a couple of places I've got pinned on the map on, map on the way back. Um, for next time but if it looks good I might even just get one rod out and give it a chuck for an hour or two but yeah I mean I'm just thinking <clears throat> maybe it's time to quit the sea fishing for uh, a month or two till the weather picks up I might still do a bit of spinning for bass if you get a good day in I hear the water's clearing up a little bit but as far as baits are going at the minute everywhere you go it's just shocking it's just shocking but it is for me I don't, I don't know what's going on at the minute I mean you know I was thinking 
should have really got a chance with my arm and got a caster, but past previous experience tells me when the weather's like this, it's windy, sea sloppy, that uh, pulls like a train down there. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, I made the choice, and then that's it. And I, got, I give him the best shot. I kept busy all day long. Is it like caught between a rock and a hard place? Really, it's like the baits were coming back totally clean, totally clean all the time. I've got a couple of rattles there in the middle, smooth, with salted lugger gone, with a bit of squid left on. But I'm not seeing proper bite. But I was like, do I leave the baits out and just sit and wait for a bite? But doing that with the lumpy sea and it on the flood, your line was just getting buried. Um, and then trying to get the lead out and your line out is a nightmare. So you have to keep constant pressure, winding down, constant pressure. Don't yank it. You just feel that grating, grating as you just, your line or your braid is lifted out the seabed. There's always a chance of finding snags and getting caught up. So I had to sort of like time it to about 10 minute casts, 15 minutes maximum, bring it in. But as I say, the baits were just totally clean. Um, but I, you know, I would have left it longer if it, I just pinned it out there and wait for a bite if the conditions allowed. But, um, that's the way it goes. Anyway, tight lines, all the best, and I'll see you again in another video. Cheerio, guys.